One of the tasks that I have here, being the first after lunch speaker, is to keep you awake for the more exciting talks that follow mine. Uh, but what I want to do in the course of this is to try to set a context for what you're going to be experiencing this week. Uh, one of the things that I want to talk about a little bit is the cyber infrastructure that really enables this biomedical research and in particular personalized medicine, which is one of the themes of this particular seminar series and the theme of this particular uh, summer institute. To do that, I want to talk a little bit about this resource, NBCR, the National Biomedical Computation Resource. It is, uh, as you can see uh, from what we have here, it really is to help enable, uh, catalyze, and, and conduct biomedical research uh, by combining, if you will, technologies, which I'll talk a little bit about, uh, as particular computational informatics technologies, and focus them on targeted, not everything, but on targeted uh, translational and, and multi-scale challenges in the biomedical arena. Now, NBCR is one of maybe 50 uh, NIH research resources throughout the country. And those resources uh, really have five major activities that are associated with them. One, of course, is the uh, technology development the tools that you're studying about today. Another is collaborative research. And you'll hear from some of our collaborators throughout today. Uh, in fact, one of the speakers that today, uh, Jack Johnson, is one of the collaborators that help guide the development of our tools. Thirdly, we provide services. In our case, it's often in terms of software that's provided or actually web services that one can use. We do training, which is exactly why we're here today, and also do dissemination at various meetings. So what I want to do is talk a little bit about uh, you know, where we're going and the type of themes that you'll be hearing about this week. Uh, we've been very fortunate to be renewed uh, by NIH uh, for another five years, and that just started uh, in May this year. And in our renewal, we focused on three major activities that we thought with the technologies we could actually make some progress with uh, over the next five years. Uh, one of which is really the improved treatment planning for heart disease through individual patient care. Uh, and one of the reasons we think that we can make a big difference now is both because of the new types of modality for collecting data, but in particular, if you take a look at the graph that's up there, over the course of a number of, of years since 2003, we've really, because of the computation and the efficiency of codes, been able to increase the ability to capture in all and closer to real time the beating in the simulation of a heart. And we think that by the end uh, of the next five years, we'll be able to have real time simulation of, of, of cardiac. The second area that we wanted to focus on is really understanding uh, the realistic subcellular structure, geometry, if you will, and how it plays out uh, and affects, in, in one of the particular cases you'll hear about, uh, in the heart cell, how the structure of the T-tubules uh, affect perhaps the mechanical interactions in the heart. And we're really looking at this region, uh, if you will, we're between the light mic uh, microscope and the electron microscope, some of that overlap, uh, and really looking at things from the supramolecular level all the way up to the sub uh, subcellular and also cellular level. And finally, uh, the third area that we've been focusing on has really been the speed in the drug discovery by creating and improving uh, and linking together many tools that exist already, uh, and really to create this type of computational pipeline. Uh, and in fact, that is in fact the theme of what comes up later after I get off the, the stage here. And we do that by creating the tools, the simulation packages, and the, and the, and the usable cyber infrastructure uh, in this case. So let me focus a little bit on the tools, or on, on, excuse me, on the technologies that we see coming along. Uh, and then go back to some of the things that we've been able to accomplish. So this is rather old. This is back in 2001, where an article in Scientific American really said, look, uh, everyone has heard about Moore's Law, which is sort of the doubling of the computer chip and its capacity for the same dollar amount about every 18 months. Uh, you've also, there are similar laws, these sort of power laws for data storage which is increasing doubling in capacity about every 12 months, and then in networking, 
itself every nine months. And these laws really gave light to a whole new way of thinking that it really isn't any more the networking that's going to be the bottleneck. It's really going to be the computing that's going to slow things down if you look out over a long period of time. Uh, with that, NSF and a number of other agencies really began to lay out something called a plan for cyber infrastructure, where it envisioned bringing together uh, computational resources, uh, large equipments for uh, observation of data, a large amount of digital collections, uh, a lot of visual tools and software, <coughs> coupled with, via the network, people. And this is sort of the plan that had been laid out by NSF and a lot of the community uh, from about 2001, 2002. There was a major report by NSF in 2003. And it sort of played itself out now over, uh, over till 2009. In 2007, NSF came out with another report that really was an internal report to NSF, but just emphasized, in fact, that high performance computing was an important component of their resource, uh, and as well as uh, data as going to be a driver. But it also focused on the people collaborations that they really see as these virtual teams in the future, people distributed working together. Now, I'm citing NSF here because they really have taken a lot of leadership in actually filling this out, and NIH has been if you will, our resource has been one that play along and help contribute to this particular vision. But what's been very interesting, and you're going to hear about that in one of the talks, is there is now actually a new business model for being able to compute, if you will, uh, without the, the sense of large resources. Uh, Amazon.com is one example, uh, where the EC2 uh, computing, where you really can now uh, you know, move away from the vision of I have to make my software work on someone else's computer with their own software is I can create my entire package and just use the machines. Uh, and this is now a really new business model uh, for being able to access uh, computational resources. And one of the things we hope to do is actually then create those types of images that you can just check out when you go on to Amazon.com when they say, welcome, Peter. Let us tell you about the new special we have for you today. Okay. So the other major trend, and second major trend, is really data. And with the data has really been the development of instrumentation. The instrumentation that is, developed, uh, that is actually creating more data at finer resolutions than we've had in the past. And so when we say that we're having a whole set of new data come along, it's not just the data themselves, but it's what we do with the data that's very, very important through various types of refinement uh, to various ways of moving that, those data into models through a variety of tools that we use to actually predict. Okay, so the second major trend is, is this one of, of data being produced uh, through new types of instrumentation and the tools we need to actually manipulate it. And the third trend, really, that we, we capitalized on was really the mathematics. That's necessary, if you will, to actually take the, the raw data and move it into those types of, uh, if you will, move it into those types of models to be able to do predictive modeling with. And you'll hear some examples of that. Uh, in particular, I just heard that there's been a lot of progress on the T-tubule structures, one of the posters outside uh, by Anushka uh, uh, Mihailova uh, and UA10 uh, actually has some very interesting new results on that. But there are also ways of, of mathematics to improve the algorithms of the images themselves. And several of you heard about that today in one of the uh, earlier uh, tutorials. And of course, these finite element codes themselves provide certain efficiency of calculations that will allow us to reach that goal by the end of the next five years of actually capturing real time that heartbeat in its regular uh, biological time. So uh, what I want to do now is really then highlight the types of tools that we are producing or that we hope to produce, and some of which you're going to be experiencing this week. Uh, are, if you recall, one of the things that we do is actually create uh, a set of technologies. And there are three that I want to talk about here. The tools actually to allow us to do multi-scale modeling and visualization. Uh, and with that, TXBR for refinement of certain types of images. The finite element toolkit, uh, and in particular the gamer, the meshing, geometric meshing. That's going to be very, very important for some modeling. Uh, as well as the MGL tools, uh, in particular Autodoc toolkit and vision which many of you heard about this morning uh, is one. Simulation is the second activity that we do a lot of, uh, in particular multi-scale simulation. 
Uh, and we, you'll see that both in the CAD pipeline, the computer-aided drug design, where it's important, as well as continuity, that uh, modeling tool for uh, understanding the heart. And the third area really is the cyber infrastructure itself. Uh, the tools actually make us be able to take advantage of these distributed set of resources. Uh, and you'll see things like vision actually being a tool used to be able to access those different resources and automate several of the processes that we, we do, especially in the computer-aided drug design. And we've had several examples over the course of uh, our, our lifetime of where we've used those tools to actually gain insights into the biomedical realm from sleeping sickness, Alzheimer's disease, uh, neurotransmission, and of course modeling of the heart. What I want to do in the next few slides is really talk a little bit about, again, going back to the, our, our three touch points for what we're going to be trying to accomplish over the next five years namely the uh, computer-aided drug design, the mesoscale modeling, and patient-specific modeling for the heart. Uh, and what you're looking at here uh, is uh, something that came out of the Andy McCammon's lab, uh, this approach to relaxed complex scheme, uh, that really says, well, rather than trying to us dock uh, a set of ligands to you know, one particular receptor, we want to take a look at an ensemble of receptors uh, gained by doing molecular dynamics on it and look for better ways and better, ultimately better ways of, or better candidates uh, through virtual screening for, for drug uh, design. Uh, and this is a very under, well understood but complex method and one of the things that we're hoping to do uh, in the course of our, our uh, five years is really to automate a lot of these pieces of it to make that easier for not just us that know how to do it to do, but others that don't know how to, uh, to use this as well to allow more people to attack a, a wider range of, of, of challenges. The second area, the mesoscale modeling, really starts with the concept, again, in a pipeline setting of information comes off of uh, instruments. Uh, instruments produce particular images. These images you are able to then flesh out and get some uh, if you will, feature extractions for that, and then being able to apply some mathematical tools to get actual uh, honest geometric representation uh, of those structures. And those structures then, the geometry of those structures get incorporated into other models. And there's a poster outside that talks about that, that really talks about then how you can really begin to look at uh, a calcium uh, transport in cells with realistic as opposed to sort of artificial uh, geometries. And finally, the last area that we wanted to po uh, focus on was really this one of individual patient care for uh, uh, the heart. And uh, this particular slide, which I borrowed from Roy, uh, was really one that says, look, there's a really important area, uh, a problem with congenitive heart failure. Uh, I think we all know that it's one of the leading causes of death for people over 65. Uh, it affects a lot of people, uh, and the survival rate isn't so great. Uh, on the other hand, there's cardiac resynchronization therapy that really uh, provides some benefits uh, to us, but there's a certain class of patients that don't benefit. And if there were a way of somehow trying to do a triage and figuring out which ones those were, we'd be further ahead and also better ways of optimizing where that resynchron uh, resynchronization takes place. And so what, going back to one of the earlier slides, what the goal of this particular area really is uh, to find better ways to incorporate this patient-specific uh, data into models uh, and use them to help us do that triage. And if you notice down here, what we really need to do is combine the individual patient information along with databases that really talk about the fibers, the directions of the fibers in the heart, and actually do the modeling to help us both decide whether a particular patient really would be uh, a, a good candidate for a particular therapy. Uh, and then afterwards, really to figure out op where we can optimize where the locations of those uh, pacemakers might be placed. So just as a, a, a word from our sponsor here, uh, as I mentioned, uh, NBCR is one of 50 uh, national resources that are funded by the National, uh, national uh, Institutes of Health. Uh, and these, these centers really are to provide training and tools for the broader biomedical community. Now within NCRR, this Division of Biomedical Technology really supports a, a variety of activities, which I listed down here. It's not just the computational resources, but their imaging resources, their 
uh, laser resources, there's tools for structural bio biology and systems biology. So while you are experiencing one of these resources, there are another 49 at least that may be of interest to you and I would really encourage you to take a look at because they do a wide variety of activities that may benefit your research. They really are here to help make uh, or to provide for you tools that will make your research easier. So let me, let me conclude by introducing uh, members of the team who will be talking uh, later today. Most of them are, uh, will be around this week. Uh, and this is really a, a wonderful group of people because they really reflect a very multidisciplinary approach to things with people from chemistry, from computer science, from bioengineering, working together to really look at not only these challenges that I talked about, but how we can ultimately figure out how to integrate information across these various biomedical scales of what we do. As you can see from uh, this particular uh, uh, slide, one of the things that we're really doing is walking our way through some of the highlights that I talked about, where the, comp uh, the computer-aided drug design uh, will be the first topic that Andy McCammon will introduce when I get off the stage. Um, tomorrow we'll talk more about mesoscale modeling uh, as one of our other three challenges. And finally, on Wednesday, the computational heart and cardiophysiology. Uh, then we'll have some tools uh, for scientific workflows and also the cyber infrastructure needed to make all this, to make all this happen. Uh, and so that's sort of the progression that very much matches up with where we see we're putting our foci this year uh, or for the next five years. And also the way that the whole institute has been structured very much follows the set of developments that we're doing in NBCR with tools, simulation, and computer uh, and, compu and cyber infrastructure. Uh, and so I hope that uh, you will take advantage of all these things. We really do appreciate your input. Uh, what we're trying this year is, in fact, based on some of the input we had from students last year, that rather than wait a day to get into doing the really learning about the tools, we're getting you in day one to learn about the tools and trying to then give you overviews each of the days in the middle of it uh, as we go on. And we really do thank you for your participation. Uh, ultimately, what we hope to come out of this in the long run are really people that we can look forward to collaborating with. And we really look forward to you taking the tools back, finding out what works, telling us what doesn't, and so we can actually make them better, but also then challenging us with, with uh, new types of uh, uh, biomedical challenges that we can work with you on. So with that, let me stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.